All right, it's boot time. Discussion on boots. Dustin, we've got a pretty big variety here. Probably my biggest pet peeve and what keeps me either happy in a day or not happy in a day is warm feet. Yeah. Um, and so we've got a couple options here. Um, it's been interesting. I started with Climb and I was an adrenal, ad, Adrenaline GTX guy. Loved the BOA system, the dual BOA. Um, and I liked how lightweight the, the boot is. It was really easy to jump around. And it's interesting, my guides started wearing the Havoc boot. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, what is going on with this thing? And I tried a set of Havocs and initially they were, I kind of felt a little Robocop-ish, you know, like tall boot, pretty stiff. Um, and literally like after one ride, I was like, I think I could probably get used to this. And what I liked about the Havoc was the taller boot to help bridge that gap between my knee brace or knee pad mm -hmm. and the boot, you know, with, with the adrenaline, um, I ended up having this little gap that I swear every time I slipped off the running board, I would hit that little gap. <laughs> so from a protection standpoint, um, I like that. The sole of the Havoc is really awesome, but uh, why don't you dive into some of the technical stuff with uh, what we have sitting here? Yeah, so what we have sitting on the table, we've got the Havoc, which you've been talking about. We've got the Adrenaline Boa. The OG. The OG, I mean, the that's... Adrenaline, yeah, like a new version of the Adrenaline Lace, but yeah. Yep. We have the Clutch, we have the Range Boot, the Transition, and the Women's Aurora. So I'll, I'll talk through like what separates all these boots, but basically we've got four riding boots these are riding boots and then two kind of casual slash you know parking lot loading unloading boots um which are really handy to have so the clutch uh i probably spent half my time wearing the, or the sorry havoc yeah. havoc i can't even get it right myself <laughs> uh so the havoc uh i spent about half my time in and part of it is because i mean i'll do a little bit of snow bike riding um but to your point i wear knee braces i wear pods and I don't like having a gap. I'm used to you know, having that full front protection, right? So anytime I'm gonna do anything aggressive, you know, tight trees, or if I'm racing or whatever, I'm usually wearing this boot. Um, the bottom of the boot is a little stiffer. The, the actual uh, plank inside is a little stiffer than the other boots. Mm -hmm. And that's mainly because on a snow bike, you're standing on a little narrow surface and you need extra support there, right? Yeah. So, and I think one thing um, that, you guys market it as a snow bike boot. Um, and I think that was one of the reasons that I kind of shied away from it too. Um, but now come to find out, like, I love it and I use it. I literally use it every day. Um, it has turned into my primary boot. Yeah, it's a, it's a crossover boot. It works as good for snowmobiles as it does for mm -hmm. snow bikes. Yep. Um, and that's why I wear it probably, you know, half the time. If I'm going on a leisure, tri you know, ride or trail ride or family ride or whatever, I'll usually go to a shorter boot. But um, this is what a lot of the racers wear. A lot of the hill climb guys will wear this. Not all of them, but a lot of them do. Um, and you'll notice there's a little bit of a break-in period with it. It'll yeah. start a little bit stiff um, compared to an adrenaline that's not quite as tall. So just expect that if you go with, with the Havoc boot. Um, yeah. The sole's a little bit different. So Michelin sole on the bottom, we've had really good luck with it. Those guys know what they're doing. Um, and uh, it's got a little, you'll notice on the left side and the right side, there's a shifter pad. And then the toe box is slightly smaller than the Adrenaline as well. And that's to make it easier to shift on a snow bike. Mm, so it's the same installation package, 600 grams on each. But I will say that I think the Havoc is maybe not quite as warm as yeah. the adrenaline just because that toe box is smaller. I would agree with that. Um, I have a size 13 foot, so, uh, and it's skinny. One, and so an advantage I have to that is having a little narrower foot and the with and so I have a little bit more room in the toe box, but I would agree. I would say between the adrenaline, like on a super cold day, if I needed to, I would um, probably run the adrenaline. Just have a little bit more warmth yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. So that's the Havoc. Next, uh, we've got the Adre Adrenaline Pro right here with the dual BOA system. Um, literally just the same boot we've had for 15 years, but we added a BOA system to it for convenience. Yeah. Um, 600 grams insulation, like I said, the same traction sole system that we've had for 15 years. It's, it's been a good combination of durability versus traction. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the neat things about these is we make them into some pretty small sizes. So like my kids, I think the smallest thing, <laughs> 
I think it's a six. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a, even some women that'll wear this because they make them in, in the smaller sizes. So it's uh, I believe six to like 14 or 15 is the sizes we make. So pretty, pretty wide range. My favorite story I like about the adrenaline boot is I remember I wasn't, this was before I was wearing climb boots. Uh, I walked by your guys' display at a show and it was sitting in a fish tank oh, yeah. in an aquarium. <laughs> the waterproof display. And I'm, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, right. And I stick my hand in there and it is dry as can be. I'm like, my feet aren't that dry, I promise you. <laughs> if we ever have people to send them in for warranty, that's how we test them. We actually put them in a bucket of water and see if the water gets inside. That's, yeah. how, that's still how we test them. Oh, and by the way, you can actually get those in a size four. A four? Yeah. See, he knows it better Someone than Someone did his homework. That's actually, right. I have a cheater I gotta right read behind up. the camera. <laughs> so. All right, so adrenaline is like really, you know, the staple of the line. Uh, and yeah. it's what is the- It's what the guys that don't wear climb will still wear and then they'll like scribble out the, have you ever noticed that? Have you ever seen <laughs> yeah. that? Like, they'll do the, you know, a guy out of skidoo or whatever. And then he's like wearing the adrenaline boots or whatever. It's, it's, yeah. it's awesome that it has that kind of reputation. The clutch was added last year mm -hmm. uh, to tell us about the, this boot. The clutch, we wanted a boot that was still fairly athletic. We didn't want a great big moon boot, but it needed to be warmer than the adrenaline. So this replaced the old Arctic boot that I actually really loved because I get cold feet. Uh, but that boot was big and bulky mm -hmm. and uh, the clutch was, was made to replace it. Yeah, this is a much lighter uh, option for a heavier insulated boot. Mm -hmm. 800 grams of insulation versus 600 grams. Mm -hmm. Single boa versus dual boa, Michelin sole on the, sole on the bottom. Um, I would say it's not, I mean, it has really good support, but it, I would say it's maybe not quite as st stiff as the adrenaline. Yeah. Maybe a slight difference there. I noticed that. And I think, you know, again, if you were rating, you know, the most support, obviously it is in the Havoc, yep. especially with it being taller, and then adrenaline, adrenaline, and then yeah. to, to the clutch. Yeah. Um, and then uh, let's, let's just let's skip, skip to the Aurora. Yeah, yep. because the Aurora is essentially a clutch but it's a women's version. Okay. So single boa, same routing, same construction, 800 grams, uh, Michelin sole, cool. but women's sizing. Uh, so it, for a long time, we had women trying to buy men's and they're trying to convert. Okay, well, if it's an eight, that means they wear a six or what, you know, they were trying yeah. to convert and it just, there was so much volume, it justified that, you know, they have their own boot. It makes sense. Yep. All right, now let's talk about, um, you asked me if I have worn uh, this this boot yeah and yeah. I have a pair and I haven't got to wear it because I got it late um, but you know the transition boot this is that's what this is right transition yeah yep. you got it I, I I wear this religiously in that fall time I anytime I'm pressure washing the truck or the trailer or anything it's Gore-Tex it's lightweight the BOA system I freaking love this thing um, tell me about the new similar one. boot to the transition but yep. it's got 200 grams of insulation ah. and here's the thing for years okay you go out in the morning at six it's snowed at night it's slick you're freezing you've got an insulated jacket on or whatever gloves you're low, throwing the sleds in the trailer and your feet are frozen by the time you get in the truck yep. right I don't want to have to put one of these on just to load the sleds so this was kind of our answer to that casual hiker, but it's going to work for loading in the parking lot, you know, in the winter when you're going out to shovel for a minute or something like that. It's got just enough insulation to be warm, yep. um, but not so big and bulky that you're in a full on riding boot. This is my all winter boot now. Like this, I wear it every day, cool. all year long, right? And then the transition is what I wear, I would say the most, the rest of the time. It's Gore-Tex, but it's slightly lighter, no insulation. Um, one thing about this boot is if you look in the bottom, it's actually got the ice lock pads. So if you get, it was, it was funny, we were doing some testing and we had a trailer ramp down that was super slick and everybody's like fall and then doing, you know, the whole running man. And we could just walk right up it with these boots. Like that ice lock is the real deal. Sweet. It's some pretty neat stuff. So just some casual options, um, you know, throughout the winter and throughout the summer that are comfortable and waterproof. Yeah, cool. Um, again, Tons of details, lots of information. Hopefully you guys can dissect uh, all of those points. Again, refer back to the site for specs on sizing and uh, features. Uh, the insulation is pretty easy. It's 600, 600, 800, 800. Yeah. So um, I hope that helps you uh, pick out the right boot so you can have warm feet and an enjoyable day out on the mountain.